All right, here we are, Tipsy Realtor Season 3. How is everybody doing today? We actually have a pretty cool show. We, take a look at these ingredients, are doing Smelling watermelon, so mint, yeah. vodka, rum, look at all this stuff, fresh lime juice. This is going to be an amazing, amazing cocktail. I so, honestly think... Like, remember the last year I fell in love with that strawberry drink? Oh, yeah. I feel like this is going to be another one of those because I'm like, you know how to recreate this at home. <laughs> but oh. I love watermelon. All right. So we're also going to talk about what to do with overgrown gardens, how that affects your resellability, and things that you can do when you're looking at selling your house. Do you keep the garden? Do you leave the garden? Do you add a garden? Do you take away a garden? All that kind of stuff. We're yeah. going to have a chat about all of that today. So. But let's cook it. Let's, let's cook it. Let's make it. Let's cook, cook it. it. Okay. Make it. So we're starting with an empty shaker right yep. now because you're actually going to muddle your mint first. So we've got the fresh mint. Oh, sorry. Let's do that. I think you can put more mint. So you're going to muddle your mint first with muddle nothing it. else in muddle there. The so mint. I always like to joke around, but with muddling, you know, this is where you get on all that aggression. What's funny is I was at the gym today and my trainer had me throwing a ball down, like one of those like 12, 15 pound yeah. balls. And he's like, get all your aggression so I, this, I have a day of aggression release today, I guess. All right, so no hard modeling for water. Yeah, exactly. So we've muddled the mint with nothing else in there. Now we're going to throw in our fresh watermelon. So chunks of watermelon already pre-cut. We're putting them into mint, and we're going to, yeah, just add everything in. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. You can also use watermelon juice if you don't want to use fresh watermelon, but I really like the idea of the watermelon. Yeah. And obviously, if you're using watermelon juice and not doing the fresh watermelon, you don't have to muddle it. But yeah. I don't know. There's something about muddling fresh watermelon that's just so much fun. Yeah, it's well, so and it comes, to the, yeah, it comes to the texture. So obviously, if you muddle your uh, watermelon, you're going to have some of that pulp smoothie texture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then when you juice, it's going to be a little bit more liquidy. And again, it's different. Like uh, we are doing crushed ice. Uh, if you're doing um, like, um, what do you call it? blended version yeah, you can do a blended version so you can use just a regular ice add the juice and blend it together yeah. and it's going to be more of a uh, slushy style more of a slurpee yeah all right now we're going into our vodka alcohol so That's right one ounce of the vodka okay one ounce of the rum white rum yeah okay I'm sure there's watermelon or watermelon flavored vodka. I you think really there wanted. is actually. I believe Smirnoff might have it. What is this? Simple syrup. Simple, simple syrup. syrup. Yeah. And half an ounce of simple syrup. Oh look at that. Half an ounce. Just enough. Of lime juice. For fresh. Uh, we did fresh squeezed lime juice. And then regular ice is yeah. now going into your shake. And you shake it. And you shake it. Shake it. Shake it. <laughs> <laughs> Like you guys should see that they're like amazing looking. Mostly you know, but while they're now like, like amazing. It, while they're in here, go. I got crushed ice for Robin here. Mm -hmm. Like snap a photo of the ones already been prepared. Oh, I'm just like killing us because they look so good. Oh my god, I can't wait to have this. Tasty. It's like, it looks like an ultimate patio. It does. And we used our tiki glasses this time. Yes. So we made sure that it looks like a patio drink. So let's kind of add this into that. So we garnish it with mint. And which one is pre-cut? I don't think yeah. any of those are pre-cut. Okay. And you just slide, put one of the watermelon slices like this. So it makes it look like a proper lunch. Okay. See? Well, look at that. that. Beautiful. All right. Now, Charlene. Oh. Charlene, we made one for oh. Charlene today. Yes, we did. Hopefully, she's watching oh, the show. Oh, fabulous she'll come office up. manager who keeps us, us together. She's coming. Oh, here she comes for her cocktail. She finally gets to be on the show. Come say hi to everybody. Oh, oh she is, didn't is go together. Going like it's like a hand. <laughs> going to see yeah. Cheers. 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 All right. Oh. <laughs> Yes. We saved it. We saved it. I think you guys should invite me on more often. <laughs> it is See, really you've been good. enjoying us. Oh my god, guys. It's mm. delicious. This is it. <laughs> it's look I'm delicious. making this all summer long. It honestly. is. I said that. I was wondering with Clint, I said because I Clint and I mm. tried this last night. 
I was wondering if you could make a big jug of it. And I think you could, honestly. Mm. The one you made with the strawberry, right? Mm -hmm. The big one. Thanks, oh, Charlene. Good. Just add ice, uh, like separate. It looks delicious, mm. smells delicious, and tastes delicious. Oh, my God. Mm. There'll be oh. no talking for the rest of the show. Just eating Sorry. and drinking. What? I love it finish. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. I don't know, guys. This is like the best drink of the season. Mm -hmm. mm. You don't even taste the alcohol in it. Mm -mm. I did. For me. For you. Very oh. nice and fresh and mint. Not sweet at all. Like, it's so nice. Yeah. Mm. Very refreshing. So if you've got people coming over and you need to serve them patio drinks, this is the one for I you. Like I'm drinking mine way too fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Partially because I'm hungry. But, you know. That's, that's what this, this is breakfast. for. Look at it. We got watermelon. Yeah, the, the paper straws are not doing well. Like, um, but right. we're saving the environment. Okay, mm. what we're talking about mm -hmm. gardening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gardening! Mm -hmm. I'm going to catch the wife. Yeah, I'm going to catch the wife. <laughs> Love the watermelon. Not so much gardening. So, when we like went to the show, I was like, I'm going to let Robin talk about the gardening. I don't garden. She does. So... You can start. Let's just start with um, gardening. Well, first of all, okay. So the first thing I always think you should do is make a Invite plan. Robin. Let's Invite garden Robin. For you. <laughs> I work for wine. <laughs> but no, make a plan. Get out there. Look at your garden. What do you want? Do you want patio seating? Do you want a fire pit? Do you want a pond? Do you want to have fish? Like ours has fish, a pond, all that kind of stuff. What do you want? Make that decision and make a plan. So if you're planning out your garden, even if you have to draw it, like sketch it on a little piece yeah. of paper and decide how you want to use your backyard before you start putting things together. It's the easiest way to do it. Now, if you already have a pre-existing garden and you got to start pulling weeds out, still make a plan because just because the garden's there doesn't mean it has to stay. You can do whatever you want with it. But when you're going to sell, you don't want to have too much of a garden because if it gets overwhelming for certain people, and yeah. I know people will say, well, I just need to find the right person. If you're looking for one person, you're going to get mm -hmm. a good value. And if that's you're open like to everyone, everyone yeah. having, right? As like, you know how many times I would walk into a beautiful home with a beautiful garden and my clients are not gardeners whatsoever. They look at this like, nope. And they will not even consider just because it's so much overwhelming work. Yeah. And people who don't garden and they just want the grass and they want their patio to enjoy, you know, evenings, like it could be overwhelming. So yeah. sometimes preparing your gardens for the sale is very important. Make sure they are not overgrown. Overgrown. Pull yeah. the stuff out. Like, you know, make it less is more, right? Yep. In the kind of in a way. Um, make sure like the sections are easily oh. viewed. Oh, am I like not in the camera? See, this is, we did we didn't check we didn't check the camera before we started the show. Uh, you know, uh, cut the branches. You mentioned uh, your mom remove uh, cut up the bush that was around her house. It was yeah. a gigantic one, and the house looked bigger. Like mm -hmm. things like that. It looks bigger. It looks cleaner. It looks bigger without it looks, the bushes. Yeah, yeah but it, it looks more presentable. And sometimes that's something you may want to consider. Just because it's a landscape that you like, that you enjoyed, it may be something that you want to pair back when putting the house up for sale so mm -hmm. that it's more appealing to a mass instead of to a few. But when you create your plan already and you can see something like in a project, you need to decide how much time you want to invest on it. For example, if make, if you yeah. can make your garden like really easy to maintain. For example, you need to go with, if we're talking about flowers, we need to go with perennials instead yeah. of annuals because annuals you need to replant it every season. It's not something, if it's not something you like, just you can pick the plants that require low maintenance, but always look, uh, on a, on a sun exposure and when you yeah. buy in plants Definitely. yes it always you have a tag it's a full sun or like partial sun or full shade so keep that in mind too yeah, we had to replant one of our backyards twice so you it's very important to know what survives the winter in calgary mm -hmm. and number two what kind of soil do you have if you have a clay soil, your plants will drown. So you have to remember to, to have special treatment for clay and put the plants that, you know, can kind of survive in those things. See, like those, these straws. And talking about lawn, 
Like yeah. It always looks better when your lawn is freshly cut. Yeah, freshly cut. Yeah. If you're selling the house, okay. it makes so much difference when the when the lawn is really well maintained. But keep it a little mm. longer. Don't cut it short, short when you're selling your house because it's going to go brown yes. and you want it to be green. So you may want to keep your lawn that extra little kind of top up and make sure you'll have to cut it a little more often. But honestly, it I'm looks better. About by loss about the oh. lawn. In certain cities and municipalities, and everyone is different. So we're talking about Calgary. Well, Calgary, I don't remember the actual inches, but there is a height of which you're limited to have your lawn only so high before people can complain to the city and have the city come in and charge you for cutting it. In your front yard and in your backyard. And in your backyard. So yeah. you and still have obligations. Like one other important thing like to remember, like, you know, well-maintained gardens, well-cut lawns, Keeps the rodents away. Keeps yep. like that pests away. You know, uh, I actually learned something. So there is uh, quite a few people having, uh, is it like a mole issue? Voles. Voles, yes. The, the ones are the worst. They kind of like, I never actually got uh, to see. Voles, they go into the ground and, yeah. they, and they make holes and stuff. And they put and your grass of, and looks like this. Yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll wreck your grass. Voles are the worst. So, yeah, and I learned that uh, actually uh, reading some of the blogs that apparently if you scrape your snow off your fencing, you let them to like kind of escape. Uh, they cover roots. Oh, cool. They don't go through the yard because that's where you, you have less snow because you will all shovel the snow to usually to the fence. Yeah. Which blocks them from, I guess, I don't know, running around oh. and they start destroying your yard. And that's what like, one of the, m one of my girlfriends who was actually a big gardener said, uh, that's what worked for them really well. Yeah. Make sure they have a path. Of running around. I will tell you, if yeah. you start noticing voles in your area, in, in your backyard, so uh, in Hidden Valley where I live, the people that back on the Hidden Valley Lake have a significant vole problem. And it's hard to get rid of them. So if you start seeing them, call an exterminator sooner rather than later because it can be really problematic. Now, also, too, is keep your shrubs. Make sure your shrubs and your trees are pruned and pruned properly. It may cost you a little bit, but hiring a professional is never a bad idea. Having properly trimmed trees when you're selling your house, it's a first impression, right? It's that curb appeal that everyone yes. talks about. People are walking up to your home, and if they can see that the exterior of your home is properly maintained and looks like it's loved and cared for, Hopefully they're going to see that that same thing extends inside the property yeah. once they start traveling around. But that's their first impression. So first if they impression. walk up and your house looks like it's not maintained, mm -hmm. that's also going to be the impression they're walking into and your front door And they're also going to think it's way too much work because like, oh my God, now I have to trim all the trees and bushes and yeah. get the extra flowers or whatever weeds out and cut the grass. It's just kind of accumulate, like, you know, we don't do it consciously. It's kind of almost like some conscious, like people come and they make a list of things to do. Yeah. And it becomes overwhelming, especially if like your home, let's say, needs some updating already on the inside. And talking about like easy way to make it prettier. For example, mulch. you can use mulch or you can use like a small rocks or like yeah. gravel. Yeah. It makes such a big difference uh, yeah. when you're just see it in the first sight. And talking, Anna was telling the story about the fake grass, about mm. your girlfriend. Yes. So, fake grass yeah, is, on it, is not like a, like a huge in Calgary, but I've seen it more and more. And yeah, one of my girlfriends had installed um, fake grass in a property. So, she has a mature old spruces. They basically destroy the yard. There is no grass. It's, uh, you so know, it's a dirt. Under yeah, spruce, the spruce you know. is very destructive to your um, grass. So she ended up going, that's it. I'm going to do it. And we were just chatting. I was like, how has it been with a, you know, fake grass? She's like, I'm so sorry I didn't do it earlier. Because like, it keeps the yard cleaner. The kids get to enjoy actually the yard sooner in uh because we're not waiting for the grass to get green to go outside it's already nice and clean the snow melted go outside yeah so it actually extends the season for spring and the fall the dogs cannot dig the trees cannot destroy and looks pretty like you know every time every year like you know every season <laughs> well and yeah. honestly nowadays like if you've got a front attached garage it's not like you have a ton of grass out front anyhow yeah so maybe considering that fake grass 
for that kind of yeah and we looked it up the prices it's not too bad obviously it varies uh apparently there are different qualities of the fake grass maybe there is one uh there is a cheaper one you can get up to like four bucks per square foot there is more fancy ones that are probably more luscious, maybe the proper right of green, I don't know. No, they yeah. do have like, different shades of green, actually. Yeah, different shades. The, yeah. yeah. The, the more expensive yeah. the grass, the more it looks like natural. Okay. So in those get, can go like up to seven bucks per square foot, but then it's a labor and installation fee. So like I looked up in Lowe's, you can get, what did you just say, 300, how many square foot? About 306 square feet. So just over 300 square feet. You can get for about thirteen hundred dollars. That's just the materials. Plus, yeah. you do it yourself or you hire the installation. Actually, I yeah. think the fake grass is really cool. We have a fake grass on our balcony. It looks awesome. Like yeah, it, you don't have to put it even on your lawn. For yeah. example, you can use it anywhere. Yeah. Well, and I've on actually seen or... lots of people put it on balconies and decks, yeah. especially in apartments, which is yeah. actually it's kind of cool because it can get that outdoor... sets the mood of our yeah. yes of the backyard, right? So it, it's something worth of looking if you like um, have a yard and say like there is nothing grows in there. Look into it because yeah. it's actually will. Uh, increase the attractiveness and the appearance of your home, which people usually pay more money for. Absolutely. All right. Now, here's the one thing. Okay, one more last thing. Okay. Don't the people that put in the completely uh, low low maintenance yards that are not fake grass and they just oh, put rocks, rocks and cement or decks? I find most people have find it not attractive. People want a little bit of green, whether it be yeah. fake grass or real grass. People do want a, a, at least a shred of green. Yeah, you minimizing the pool of the buyers who would appreciate. 100%. Like, I mean, I just had a client who wanted exactly that. He didn't care for any grass, uh, but again, it's something that not everybody appreciates. We do see it quite a bit in a, inner city new yeah. developments. It's because the yards are small and people are trying to um, make it easy so there's not like that one patch of grass you try to keep it alive. You just extend the big patio for oh, entertainment. It's really common with when you have detached garage on yeah. the back, so it yeah. like steal the half of your backyard and the other tiny like, yeah. so half, no, like so it's all covered. Know like your that. audience, I guess, on yeah. this one. And if you're doing a low maintenance yard, like I always say then, Make it about entertainment. Don't just cement it over because yeah. and leave it nothing. Install a cool fireplace that people can gather around. Yeah. Like make it of that, how you say, like oasis without like grass. You can put the plants in the planters. You can. Yeah. Pots, yeah. yeah. You can even do like those uh, um, portable ponds yeah. or fountains. Make it an oasis because people then will see the value of low maintenance yard. Absolutely. Yeah. And. I said this was the last thing, but it's not the yeah, last thing. Not. Okay, this is really the last yeah, thing. Nothing. Okay, if you're doing a pond, if you're digging down a pond, you have to dig it down past the frost line. If you intend to put fish in it, we do winter our fish in our pond. We usually lose one a year, but once you get 12 and they grow, <laughs> well, it just it happens, it right? Happens, because, yeah. you know, our Chinooks. But you got to dig down past the frost line. You gotta, You can winter your fish, so you can just buy them, put them in your pond, and they'll go to sleep over the winter, and then they'll wake up in the and spring. And they go like all the way in the bottom? Yeah, Is that they go to the bottom, oh, and they just hibernate, and oh, then they come up. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's how we get our big koi yeah. fish, because we buy the koi fish small, we yeah. bring them into our pond, we let them winter and stuff like that, and eventually they're big. Cute. So... That is how you do it, but it's prize time. Talking about the frost line and slushy drinks and keeping things cold on the patio, we are giving away a really cool present. Yeah, absolutely um, awesome present. Uh, gift, yeah. So next week, by the way. Next week. Next I can't week. believe. Yeah, no, it it's is. not. Because June next 1st week is, is the Thursday. Oh, right. You have oh one God. more week to like show I feel like that you just bought yourself an extra week. To uh, love our shows, like our shows, tag your friends, tag your family. I don't care if you're just watching for the cocktail and you love the cocktail and you tried it. Please let us know how it tasted because we'd love to hear those things too because like we obviously love cocktailing. <laughs> and if you have some really delicious cocktail, might just send it to us, and yeah. we're gonna see what's gonna be going in the season Absolutely. four. Yeah, but we have so, something super awesome yeah. coming up for season four, yeah. so watch for so, it. I don't know, you we'll can announce. see it. So basically, it's a. You have to put it closer. Uh, oh, yeah. No. No. Further. So, uh, Sorry. Further, <laughs> so it's a self twirling, cold self stirring. Self stirring. Yeah. Honestly, it's self getting cold. 
So yeah. hold fast. Keeps it cold, stays cold. Then the top here, which we actually figured out that you can put the straw in and just kind of, but it measures one ounce of alcohol. So you, you bring this to the party and that's it. Like that's all you just keep adding. You don't need to like measure out with a shot glass with a straw and you're ready to go. And that's going to be great. So we give you know, get two for you and your best friend or partner. Our partner. All right. Yeah. But next week, Tokyo okay. Cosmos, and we're going to talk about yeah. out-of-country buyers. And this mm. is where we're going to explain the current for foreign buyers ban, the impact of the foreign buyers ban, what's happening with out-of-country buyers. What's the difference? Because sometimes there's foreign buyers that can't buy. So we'll talk about that too. Absolutely. But most importantly, and the part that I love the most, that if you are looking at buying or selling a home in the next 6 to 12 months, or if you have a friend, family member, coworker, a person that you hate, or someone you just overhear in the grocery store talking about buying a house or in a coffee shop, anytime you hear someone mention real estate, please tell them to call Robin Moser, Anna, and Victoria, because we are going to help them buy or sell a house. Absolutely. The market is isn't still insane. I don't know what what's happening. I like well, and it's, it's like gonna be like a long spring market going into September. <laughs> and it's funny because everyone thinks that the uh, the competing offers are gone. They're not gone. Yeah, oh my constant. god, the house on Sundance. <laughs> yeah. She's traumatized. I traumatized. I traumatized. traumatized. It was listed for five hundred, and in two days it goes six fifty. One fifty grand more. Yeah. So, so but just to have remember, an idea. not all Calgary markets are equal. So do yeah. talk to us if you're thinking of listing your home. How? What kind of home you have? Where it's located? What price you're looking for? Because it may be different for you. All right. Yeah. See ya. Enjoy the sun. Stay I am safe. gonna get enjoy this. That 